Uh, my name is Victor Komakech. Uh, I work with uh, HRNS Uganda as the project manager of uh, USAID Feed the Future Alliance for Resilient Coffee. It is a consortium of seven international organizations. In Uganda, it's mostly HRNS and International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, together with World Coffee Research, that are most active. Uh, climate change is having very adverse effects uh, on coffee production in Uganda. Uh, we have extreme droughts that are coming as a result of changes in temperature. We have uh, erratic and seasonal rainfalls, and this is affecting coffee production and, uh, of course, the livelihood of the farmers. So generally, it's quite a big problem, and uh, if not addressed, we shall, in the future, lose uh, most of the areas in which we are producing coffee right now. So the objective of the ACT project in a nutshell is to increase private sector engagement in climate change uh, adaptation and uh, of course to produce uh, more practical tools and practices and technologies uh, that can improve the resilience of uh, smallholder coffee farmers to the impacts of climate change. So each one of us within the consortium has a role to play. My name is Maureen Namgal. I work for World Coffee Research as the country agronomist. Basically, World Coffee Research is a non-profit organization that works on advanced research on a collaborative basis. It is under the ARC consortium, which has an objective of implementing practices that are resilient to climate change. Among the tools of the Alliance for Resilient Coffee, we have the on-farm technology trials, which test a combination of variety alongside improved climate smart practices. So we are looking at how best can we combine these practices alongside the varieties to get a higher profit, but at the same time looking at the cost. Here in Bale, we are looking at the practice of shed soil conservation, that is the use of cover crops and the trenches. And we are also testing fertilizer application to improve on the nutrition of the plant. All this is combined along the different varieties, that is the Batian variety, the SL14, and the control variety within this region, which is called the Wugisu Loco, where we are having shed, we are having the least amount of leaf rust. But where we've not put shade in the coffee, there is more leaf rust. It's majorly affecting the local varieties. But when you go to the Batian, we didn't find any spots or any effect of leaf rust. So these practices are being distributed in the different areas. And at the end of it all, these are trials, testing them, and we shall get results. So we can conclude that, that once that we have the results at hand, we can advise the farmer. I am David Mukasa, working with the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture as a research associate. IIT's role in art is research work, mainly focused on research. IIT has developed a number of tools which are helping farmers to enhance adoption of climate smart agricultural practices and also good agronomic practices that we are promoting under ARC. Stepwise is an approach which breaks down the entire package of CSA practices and gaps into small affordable units that farmers can implement in phases. The stepwise in Ruero has got four steps. Step number one would involve a farmer to do weed control and also desaccharying, that is removing suckers. Then step number two, that's where the farmer now is introduced to pruning and also adding manure. Step number three, that's when the farmer now adds mulching. Step number four, that's when the farmer is introduced to using herbicide, now the chemical control, and he controls BCTB both using culture method, that's plucking and burning, and use of chemical pesticide. So that's the most intensive stage of stepwise, which involves some amount of money and some farmers don't have the money. So some of the farmers, it will take them some time to reach step four, while others who are, have the capacity, it will take them in a shorter time. So for us as uh, HRNS, we mostly support uh, setting up of demonstrations, 
we support extension, we train farmers on those different practices. If we talk about mulching, if we talk about uh, trenching, if we talk about shade tree planting. One of the things that we have found out is that, of course, there are a lot of gender disparities in the households uh, that we work with. Uh, for example, the women, their participation in trainings is actually extremely low. And uh, when it comes to also sharing proceeds from uh, what comes out of the coffee in the farm, the women are normally sidelined. So we have come up with an intervention to integrate uh, gender trainings into our climate work. We are very fortunate because we have got very many trainings for gender issues to empower these women. And I'm telling you, Women are very powerful. My farmers can now also fight against this problem of climate change. So the trainings we have got for gender issues have also helped us much. And uh, what I can advise as organizations is only one. Let us empower women.